Awesome. What about WWECW? Did you look at that <laughs> as an opportunity? I mean, hey, you're a young guy, more TV time for you, right? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding? When the writer comes up to you and says, I don't know what's, what Vince is on today, but he mentioned you in the meeting and you're a prominent part of tonight's show. Yes. What do you need me to do? It allowed me to a show my peers that I could quote unquote work. I can make your stuff look really good. I'm not going to hot dog. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a good worker. If I had any heat with anyone, I, it was my chance to really cool it off. Because at the end of the day, if you're a good worker, even if I don't like you, Mike, I'm going to go out there and make money with you. It also gave me a chance to show off promo skills. And it just gave me TV time. And it allowed the boys to know me for who I was. I developed friendships there. To this day, there are things I look at on ECW. And also, don't forget, it opened up the door for commentary for me. So it really was a huge thing for me all in all. You mentioned heat. Is there anyone in particular you had heat with? Any certain incidents? Or you just want to move past that? Uh, I didn't have heat with them. They all had heat with me. <laughs> when I first got to WWE, I, I, I ran my mouth. I didn't think. And I said things that while the intent, there was no malice, it was just, Take a second and think before you speak. Is, is, so a lot of the, vet, the, the guys that were there, uh, first you have to understand, when you're on the indies, I think we kind of root for each other in a way. I think we don't see each other as a threat in a way. It's more of a fraternity and a brotherhood, at least it was when we were there. When you get to WWE, it's a bit more that everyone is kind of on eggshells. And who's this new guy? And, oh, whoa, he does that move? <laughs> So the heat came from me opening up my mouth and not knowing when to shut up and also being the new guy, but also selling the heat. Oh man, the fact that, that uh, Bob Holly yelled at me, you saw that that broke my heart because A, I was a huge Bob Holly fan. B, all I want to do is be in WWE and C, I'm getting, I'm getting yelled at by a guy that may very well tear my throat out. So these were the things, and, it, and in hindsight, you don't know what someone's going through. Years later, Bob has become, is one of the nicest, kindest human beings I've ever met. He's an animal lover. He was just going through a rough time, and here comes this snot-nosed kid that mouthed off to the wrong guy somehow, caught Bob on a bad day. That's all. That's how you got to look at it. He never ripped my throat out, thank God. <laughs> Uh, or your face, because you're too damn pretty still, man. man that probably still didn't work in my favor still, either, but thanks. Little handsome bastard. When they bring in ECW, they put you with the Sandman right off the bat, correct? When, uh, when yeah, there was a man. few, some some high-profile six-man tags and stuff, and then the first real feud or angle is, is with Hack, is with Sandman, yeah. How'd you like working with him? So, as you know, in pro wrestling, <laughs> everyone is your already. friend when you're around. And then when you go away, nobody is your friend. I'm happy to say that I still speak with Hack at least once every two months because of the real human being that he is. Uh, when you're there in WWE, it could be a very lonely place. Trust me when I tell you that. Yeah, you know, you got a lot of fans, you got a lot of money, but when that hotel room door clicks behind you, a lot of bad things can happen. Sandman and I were like just kindred spirits. And also, I think it helps in a weird way when you're comfortable with someone, you, you're not afraid to hit them as hard, even though you don't want to. But if one kind of gets away, it's okay. And your chemistry is better. And you're, you don't have to plan things in advance. It's just, I kind of just know what you're thinking. So he was a wonderful person. And also, he was kind of like a gatekeeper to a lot of people. If you can get in there with Hack and have a good one, because he gave off this wild, I'm always drunk, because he wasn't. But if you can get in there and have a good one with Sandman, which I did almost every night, they got to respect you when you walk through the curtain, I'll tell you that much. So I'm real thankful for Hack and thankful that we're still friends to this day. That's not the answer I thought I was going to get when you said, well, I thought <laughs> you were going to say you hated working with the guy, but yeah. that's good to hear. Talk to me about working with Sabu. I love to work with Sabu. Another guy that the beauty of wrestling is that you can make someone believe. Now, if, and I don't want to tear down any facades, but wrestling is what it is. You see Sabu and you think, man, oh man, that guy is a wild maniac. That, when I tell you that I was taught and you were taught to be what's called light in the ring, 
but make it look like I'm killing you as opposed to the stuff that looks horrible and why are you punching me in my eye seven times? <laughs> Sabu is light as a feather. And we would do stuff, again, just one of those click, click. A lot of the ECW guys could work. Not saying guy, other guys couldn't, but that renegade style of, hey, listen, I just got here. I'm lacing up my boots in the car. My music's playing. Let's go out there. You'd really be surprised how how good you are. You have no idea until you have to go out there and let's just go and call it. So that's where Sabu was great for me. And you got to remember these guys, Sam and Sabu, Tommy, Rob, had my WrestleMania moment with them. And for those guys, except for Rob, say for Rob, that was the only WrestleMania moment they had. So to see them there, for their families to see them, especially for Tommy, for his daughters to see him, I'm glad I was on whether it be the shit end of the stick or not, I was glad I was on the stick or the branch for that. Let's talk to you about Rob Van Dam. What can I say? Uh, I think my matches with Rob Van Dam won me over with my peers in the locker room. Rob was the first, so I had what's called heat in the locker room. I, I wasn't the most popular guy. I wasn't dressing with the boys. Every match I had was 60% real, to be honest with you. And, and that was fine with me by that point. I mean, I. I, I didn't think anyone was going to come out there and break my arm or leg just because that wasn't going to be good for business. And if anyone was going to try to punch me in the face, not the first time, not the last. Rob was the first guy that said to me, yo, man, I think that's all BS. You could change with me anytime. And he kind of gave me some insight. He's like, you know why those guys are all down on you and dogging you, right? I'm like, yeah, you know, it's because I opened up my mouth. And he's like, no, it's because of who you're dating. And it never dawned on me. I was dating a diva at the time. He's like, yeah, none of that helps. He's like, they all want to be with that. It doesn't help. And I was like, oh, you're a brilliant man. So Rob and I spend time together and uh, we share very similar interests in certain things. So that helps with creativity. And then the matches, as far as athleticism and being able to work, when Rob Van Dam gives you a monkey flip and you almost go out of the ring and people go nuts and bananas and Chris Benoit comes up to you and he's this close in your face. I haven't seen someone take a monkey flip like that since Eddie, God rest his soul. Those are the things you remember. So Rob is Rob made me better, if that makes any sense. Talk to me about WrestleMania for you, because you grew up watching Love in the Northeast, watching WrestleMania. You're on the Indies. People are giving you crap. You're never gonna make it. There you are, Matt Striker of WrestleMania. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. So I, you learn things about yourself as a human, as a performer, as an athlete. And one of the things I've learned is that on the biggest stages and my biggest moments, everything stops. And you and I are the only people in the room. I remember being at, uh, working for Jim Kettner, and we'll talk about that, ECWA. He had, what was that, St. Matt's Parish? Is that what he had there? And he had the, the, those lighting, big lights were on the sides of the ring. And there's a team called the SAT who never get the respect they deserve. God bless them. And they had this move called the Spanish Fly. And I was going to take it for the first time. And I took it for the first time in St. Matt's. And they climbed up there. And I'm up there. And they're all up there. And you know, that building held, what, 1,200 people on a good night? Mike, when I tell you there was no one else in that room except for me and the SATs, it all just went quiet. And we went spinning through the air. <sighs> That's what WrestleMania felt like for me. And I, I knew that I felt like a pro when right in the, the area is called Gorilla, for those that aren't familiar, right in that little tunnel, I was remembering everything that everyone else had to do in the match. I was remembering where you were supposed to be, your spot. What do I do if he's not there? It was almost like I became this quarterback that saw the field. And in that moment, I felt I belong. We went out there. Time stopped. I did my spots. Uh, the monkey flip with Rob actually wasn't as good as some of the other ones in Mexico, but most people still talk about that. And... Uh, yeah, and also Scott Armstrong was the referee, and that's another guy who was just so wonderful to me and from such a wonderful family. But uh, yeah, WrestleMania was, uh, was wonderful. But again, at the end of the night, you get back to your room and you know, the girl goes downstairs to the party and you have that moment where you just sit at the edge of that bed and that door clicks and you're alone. You have no one that you can share it with that'll be genuinely happy for you. Right? They'll be like, yeah, that was awesome. No, they're going to slit your throat every chance they get. So there was that. 